Uh, but here is a moment of policy. I have said this many times before, but um, I have never seen it presented, uh, this data. Of course, God's against gay ed data, so uh, forgive me if I am struck down by lightning in the course of telling you this story. Uh, the Atlantic, and we will link to this uh, on our uh, site, because this is a very important, it's a very important data point, and it's, I've never seen it broke down this way, uh, broken down in this way, and uh, also um, presented in graphic form. The Urban Institute researcher Richard Johnson started to run the numbers. I've talked in the past about how traditionally 90% of the nation's income basically was subject to the Social Security tax. Wherever the, um, the uh, cap was, whether it was at uh, 106,000, 110,000, 100,000, 95,000, going back through time uh, and down and down, 90% of Americans' income ran through that. But because of the tremendous amount of wealth disparity, because so few people have so much of the money, that percentage has dropped down to about 83, 82, 81%, depending on whose stats you use. And that 7 or 8% shortfall, or I should say that 7 or 8% uncaptured tax on income is what contributes to a major part of the shortfall in Social Security starting, of course, in 2033, 34, where Social Security will only be able to pay out 75% of benefits. And it will be able to do that until I am just a sack of worms, maybe not even that, maybe I'll be fully composted at that point. Unless, of course, I live to about 110. Possible. So this researcher, Richard Johnson, broke down the numbers on how much income, or what percent of the income generated in a specific county is subject to the Social Security uh, tax. On the counties that contribute the least to Social Security as a share of local earnings, the number one place in the country, the number one county, I think in terms of income disparity, folks, and you will be able to guess this, is Manhattan. New York, New York, 47.7% of the income earned in Manhattan is subject to Social Security tax. Compare this with the Bronx. I'm talking the Isle of Manhattan. Compare that with the Bronx. 94.4% of all the income generated in the Bronx is subject to the Social Security tax. So you understand what you have here is that you have so much money that is being made over $110,000 by specific individuals in Manhattan that fully 50%, more than 50% of the income generated is above that amount. Whereas in the Bronx, almost only 6% of the income generated there is generated by an individual getting paid more than $110,000 a year. And so you can guess from there, the number two county or uh, borough, I guess, or town in the uh, country that is subjected is Queens at 92.6%. So you see what's going on here in Manhattan or in New York. Uh, number two, in terms of least amount of income subject to the uh, Social Security tax as a share of the income generated there, Fairfield, Connecticut, 49%. Westchester, New York, 59%. San Mateo, California, I, guess, I would presume that's outside of San Francisco or somewhere around there. I don't know. Uh, Lake, Illinois, that's a suburb of Chicago, I would guess. It's where basically everybody goes to live when you have the money. You go into the city and you move out. Uh, Contra Costa, California, Fulton, 
Georgia, which I imagine is near Atlanta, and so you got a lot of those uh, soda executives, Coca-Cola and what other companies. Uh, Suffolk, Massachusetts, which must be where a lot of the people, but that's 69%. I mean, you're back up to 69%. So really, I mean, you got to be looking at New York and Fairfield. And then San Francisco is at 70%, Norfolk, Mass, 70%. So you see what we have here, the problem that we have, is that there's just too much money in the hands of too few individuals to not raise the cap on Social Security. If you raise the cap on Social Security, virtually no one in the Bronx will pay more money to Social Security than they do now. If you uh, lift the cap on Social Security, fully half the people in Manhattan will then pay more in Social Security. 